Hello everyone. So by now you might be feeling comfortable with the common factor method. Now we're going to go, we're going to step it up a notch and look at a different type of common factor. So in the previous lessons, we typically looked at things like this, where you could take out a three and an X, Kevin, and then you'd be left with X in the first one and then plus two. If you're not yet comfortable with that, then just go watch the previous videos just to make sure you're comfortable. You don't want to move forward when you're not comfortable with the previous stuff because then it just becomes terrible later on. You want to know exactly how each type works before moving on. So the new type of factorizing is going to look something like this. So what we see is that we have these two terms over here and the common thing is this entire bracket. So we take out the entire bracket. And what would we have left? Well, in the first term, you're still going to have a 3 left. And in the second term, you're still going to have a plus 2a. Why? Because the common thing was the x plus y. So you simply took the x plus y to the front. So here with this one, the common thing is x minus y. So that's going to go to the front, but in a bracket. Then in your first term, you're still left with a 7. And in your second term, you're still left with a B. It's as easy as that. So let's practice these now. So your common bracket here is A minus Y and A minus Y. So that's common. So you take it out in the front. Then you'd be left with X plus B. The common thing here is X minus Y and X minus Y. So we take that out. Then in the first term, you're still left with an X and you're still left with minus 5. This one you need to be careful about. So if we look at here, what is common? Well, this, okay, so this X is over there, and then this one has two X's. And so the common thing is an X, and then the bracket is also common. So what we're gonna take out is X and X minus Y. Then what are we gonna have left? Well, in the first term, we've got nothing, so we say one. And then in the second term, we still have an X. Let me show you that again. I know that that did not sink in the first time. So if I write this out, that's just going to be X, X minus Y. Now this part has X and X, and then X minus Y. So what is common? Well, this X goes with that, and then this whole part goes with that whole part. So we're taking out X, X minus Y, which is all the stuff in yellow. Now let's see what we have left. In the first bracket, we've got nothing, so we just say one. In the second bracket, we still have this X over here. So we say one minus X, and there's your answer. With this one, if we look in the two terms, this is common with that, and that's all. There's nothing else that's common. So here we only take out X minus Y. In the first term, you're still left with an X, in the second term, you're still left with minus y. In the first term, we've got an x plus 3 and an x plus 3. 2 is not in common with 7, and that's so we can't take anything else out. So all that we can take out is x plus 3. And then in the first term, we're still left with 2x and then minus 7y. Okay, so here we go. Now here you've got to be careful. We've got this in common. Does the number 3 and 6 have anything in common? Yes, the number 3. And then here we've got an x squared, and here we've got an x. So we could we could think of it as, let me just write this out again. So it's going to be 3xx, x, because that's what x squared means, if you want to write it out like this using the long method. And then 6 is, I'm just going to leave it as 6x. Okay, so what's common? Well, x minus 4 and x minus 4. There is a 3 that can go into both of these numbers, and then we've got this x and that x. So the common thing that you're going to take out is 3x, x minus 4. Now what would we have left? Well, in the first bracket, you still have this x. There's still going to be a 2 left over here, but then that's all, because this is taken away and this is taken away. Okay, so let's try these. So what we can see here is that Obviously, the x minus y is common, so we know that that's common. But then the number 7 and 14, well, 7 can go into both of those. So we take out 7 as well as x minus y. So that's what we're taking out. Now, what are we going to have left? So in the first term, there's nothing left, so we're going to say 1 minus. Now, there's still a 2 from that's 14, and then this x is still over there. And so that's the answer for that one. In the second one, 
There's obviously x minus y, which I'm just going to underline over there. That's common. There is an x over here, and there will definitely be an x over there. And then the number 5 can go into 5 and 10. So we're going to take out a 5, 1 x, and we can take out x minus y. So what will we have left? Well, in this first term, the 5 is gone. The x minus y is gone, but there's still two x's left. So we can say x squared minus... For this next one, the x minus y is gone, the x is gone, but the, we still have a 2 there because 5 times 2 is 10. Oh, and I see I haven't even finished the last one. There we go. So with this one, well, what's common is x minus y. There is, there will definitely be x's in common because this one has 2, this one has 3, and then the number 7 can fit into both 7 and 21. So that will become 7. There's three x's here and two x's over here, so we can take out at least two, and then we can take out x minus y. So what would we have left? Well, in the first term, you still have a three, because three times seven is 21. There would still be one more x, because this was x to the power of three. Then we don't have anything left in the, in the second term, and so we just say minus one. Okay, so here's the last three for this lesson. So, there's nothing common with 3x and 4y, but we do know that w minus y is the same as w minus y, so that's all that we're going to take out in the front. Then in the first term, we're still going to be, so this is gone and this is gone, so in the first term, we're still going to have a 3x, and in the second term, we're still going to have 4y. Now, there's a, quite a few things in common now. For the 6 and the 3, well, we know that 3 can go into both of those, so we'll take that out. There's two x's here and one x here, so we can always take out the lowest number. And then they both have an x minus y, so we can take that out as well. Okay, so in the first term, what would we have left? Well, six. if you take a 3 out of that, there's still going to be 2 left over, because 3 times 2 is 6. There's still going to be one x left over. Then in the second term, there's nothing that's going to be left over, so you just say minus 1. And for the last one, there is two x's over here and one x over here, so you can definitely take out one. Then there's one y here and one y here, so you can definitely take out one y. Then there's an x minus y in both of them, so we can take that out. Okay, so what's left in the first term? Well, there's still going to be one x left over, and there's going to be a 10, so we can say 10x. And then there's nothing left in the second term, so we just say minus 1.